Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Sweden is definitely overpowered campaign. So yeah, the more I think about it, the more Tech 6 just makes sense. I, I like knocking out the entire idea group first, just because every time you take an idea, you, you lower your tech cost by 2%. So you're saving like, you know, 12 Monarch points. So usually it makes sense to try to do it first, but... I don't know. So the only, only province we can get for zero diplomacy is this one. Uh, we are taking from a rival, which is quite nice. Apparently we do not have a despotic monarchy. We've got a feudal monarchy. So we've got income from vassals and national manpower. Hmm. I wonder if maybe it would make sense to switch to despotic. It's probably not worth spending admin points on right now. But the unjustified demands reduction could save us some diplomacy points. Well, we definitely want that one, because it's got the uh, important center of trade. We definitely want to take um, coastal provinces and provinces that are in uh, trade nodes that I care about. Like, that could be amazing if we could actually... Could we just take Novgorod? We sure can. Just take all of that. 106 Diplo points. 58% overextension. Fallen countries might join a coalition. Novgorod doesn't matter. Pskov, Denmark, none of these guys matter. Good. Alright, well that sounds pretty good to me then. Works out. Conquered Colmory. Our manpower cover speed will be coming back. Um, wish I could improve my prestige. Manpower reserve needs to recover. Well, we're going to do this anyway, so maybe it makes sense. So, Novgorod, rather expensive. Quite a bit of de quite a bit of development down there. So, just picked up two important centers of trade. Unrest is stupendously high. And we have quite a bit of war exhaustion. Let's start top down. Um, do you want to buy down war exhaustion, maybe? It'll buy it down twice. Just because it saves admin points. And because I don't want the extra unrest anyway. Not to mention war exhaustion impacts your manpower recovery speed, so... It just makes sense to get rid of some of it. Okay, yep, top down. Can't core them all. It's fine. We're not going to do this idea. We're going to take tech 6 for security. Novgorod's no longer a valid rival. We also have enough power projection now, which is pretty cool. Looks like, uh, yeah, Muscovy. Muscovy's outraged. Wants your provinces. Yeah, you were doomed to be a temporary alliance. What am I looking for? I'm looking for my rivals. Okay, who else hates you? Lithuania does. We're still allies with them. Good. So yeah, we don't get to keep the trading post that they built, but... So, autonomy-wise... I wonder if we're better off just raising autonomy and not... playing the rebel game. We're still low on manpower. I think that's probably probably the case. Looks a lot better now. We've already got a theologian. And again, Tech 6 is going to help out quite a bit. So now, from here, um. I suppose we'll group these guys up a bit, and we'll have a guy over here. I did not take the fort in cargo pole, so that means we're. We, we don't have a fort over here. Which is a bit concerning. Might be a good idea to build one. Really, I think Ustug would be the best location. It's got so many bordering provinces. We don't own that yet. Novgorod has rivaled us, so we can re-rival them. 
very well. That means we no longer have to cancel the embargo. Dummy. It's not very smart, is it? Okay, so our rivals are Denmark, which... Do we still have a truce with Denmark? We do, for quite a long time. Okay, well, gained a bunch of naval force limit, but not much else. I do have a loan that I need to pay back. 124 ducats. And fort maintenance is rather expensive. So our army maintenance a bit. Pay that off next month. I'd say our country's doing quite well, Swedish people. I remember when I was in Sweden for ParadoxCon 2015, I got a chance to go through a few museums, and it's really fascinating looking at real-life history, like the the size of the actual empire of, you know, or the kingdom of Sweden as it grew and changed over the years. And Well, it's kind of sad, but, you know, like most countries, I think, have this, have this in their history that they, they're much smaller now than they were at one point. Almost all countries seem to be that way. How are we doing on this Poland air thing? We are at three points. Nice. That's impressive. By impressive, I mean not impressive. But this is impressive. So even though we are rivaled to Novgorod again, we still have Eclipse Novgorod. <laughs> That's quite funny. So for a couple of years here, I mean, we're, we're going to tick down at four per year. But, has long time rivals is going up, so that's good. I think, what does that cap out at, 15? So yeah, actually we, we should be able to maintain this for a little while. So, rebel factions, independence for Corellia. Corellians. Ingerminland. Still rather upset for some reason. What's your problem, people? I mean, we did just conquer you, so I suppose there's that. Need to remember that I have uncored provinces. We let the war exhaustion come down. France has rivaled Austria. Good for them. Papal State is now the Papal Controller. Prestige certainly feels difficult for us to come by. You guys are all over the place with your rivals. Alright, so I'm, I'm willing to go down to like 20 or 15% maintenance or so. We'll keep all the mercenaries while we wait for our manpower to come back. And uh, keep the forts active because I want to keep nice, nice and high military tradition. We're at 50.3. It's suddenly much easier to get military tradition in, in the beta patch. Between getting 5 for sieges and uh, having that floor from having fully activated forts. Not to mention, in our case, the fact that we've got this uh, this bonus one yearly army tradition. That's quite strong. Uh, let's go ahead and take Military Tech 6. Should dissuade Muscovy from trying anything. And aggressive expansion is pretty, uh, pretty localized. Got quite a bit with Norway. It's coming down at a rate of what? 1.8. So if we could get a little tiny bit more prestige, we could get it to come down at 3 per year. That would be quite nice. Also, um, we are getting enough technology that we could start building a number of buildings. Like a marketplace in uh, some of these provinces with a lot of trade power would be good. How many, no how many provinces do we have that actually have good trade power. Well, there's... There's Neva. 
not construct more buildings in Novgorod. You already have a building. Oh. Do we have fewer buildings because of the, um, the woods? I feel like 22 development should be two buildings, at least. It might just be that you need to have a core. Yeah, because here we have plus one from grasslands, and then we have, yeah, it's just the lack of a core, I think. Scotland has announced Norway as a rival. So Norway's free. And they are threatened by us. But they own land that I want, so... That chance. Hmm... I have quite a bit of orthodox territory, but again, I think I'm going to wait until we have a little bit more admin tech. Better conversion skill. Form Scandinavia. We can almost do that, actually. Mid Midgilland. Get some prestige and reduced monthly autonomy. Get claims on a bunch of stuff. There goes our military advisor. Hey, land maintenance guy. We'll take you, sure. Water tensions. We're getting a claim on cargo pole. Thanks, game. It's nice of you. So Poland, Lithuania, and we still have our alliance with the Livonian Order. This can't last. Neither can anything with these guys. And if I don't start taking land from down here soon, then I'm going to end up having to fight Poland for it. Our truce with the Teutonic Order did expire. Let's see if... Um, Let's just see how things are. They'd be protected by Austria and the Livonian Order. One of my allies. Lithuania would help, Poland would not, which is good. Because Lithuania doesn't have a claim on any of that. I mean, I don't have any points to core this. Actually, it's really cheap. 144. It's surprisingly good, and it's such a good province. And it's in our Baltic Sea. I mean, we need Danzig. You are allied with the Livonians and with Austria. The Livonians are allied with Muscovy. So if we want to fight, it's going to be through the Teutons. It's not going to be by declaring on the Livonians. But I'm pretty sure that Lithuania could probably wreck... The Livonians they have way more troops. As far as Austria goes, I'm not sure. I assume, with them having got the Burgundian inheritance and the fact that they're still emperor, that they're quite strong. Yeah, they actually have the strongest army in the world right now. But, mostly mercenaries. Of course, we have infantry combat ability, so we got that going for us, which is nice. However, Brandenburg hates you. Does Brandenburg have a truce with you? They don't. So an alliance with Brandenburg... Oh, look at that. Protestant Reformation has already started. Did I miss that? How did I not get a pop-up about that? I must have. I changed a bunch of my message settings, so if I just completely missed it, then... Oops. Yep, yeah, Protestant Reformation is well underway, and we are not Protestant. All the Reformation centers have already formed. That's unfortunate. Um... Let's just check real quick. Search all. Uh, Reformation. Just others. There's not nothing for when it appears. <laughs> uh, oh well. 
So perhaps we'll stay Catholic. I mean, I'm supposed to join the Protestant League whenever that happens. I mean, there's, there's an achievement for that. We can still join the Protestant League even if we're Catholic. We would join the, the Protestant League and then lead it. So we need to be the strongest in the, of the Protestants very soon. I mean, we're probably... We're, we're getting up there. Of course, it'd be nice if we didn't have 15 mercenary regiments. If I were to take more land from you, would I want to maybe get a claim on Mamel as well? Having a border with Lithuania. Generally, you don't want to border your, your allies, but <laughs> it could work out. I mean, we're still allied with Poland, so it's a three-way thing. Either if Lithuania attacks us, then they've got to attack Poland. If Poland attacks us, then they've got to defend against Lithuania. Unless one of them decides to rival me, which they shouldn't, since they're both at positive 200 relations. So we just got to sneak in and take Danzig. Austria would almost not protect them. I tell you what, if Austria's current war continues to go poorly, they're defending against Venice, and they are apparently not doing too well. Oh, he brought in Aragon and England. That explains it. So Austria is getting blockaded, most likely, by... Look at that war exhaustion. That's not too bad. Why do they have intolerance? Oh, got some Protestant up there already. Let's wait a bit and see um, see if maybe we can attack the Teutons without Poland or without Austria intervening. That would make it a very easy war. Oh, there we go, right there. Only eight reasons. Seven. This would cost us an alliance, but I don't really care about the Livonians that much. That's a horrible thing to say. I know. Austria's at six reasons now. War exhaustion, debt. These things, uh, they add up. Negative five reasons, there we go. The actual icon doesn't update till you reload it, but the number is accurate. So if we declare war right now, it'd be Lithuania plus me versus the Livonians and the Teutons. And the Teutons are very weak, and the Livonians are very weak. I don't even think I need to really do anything. Assuming, of course, Lithuania is going to transfer control, which they should, since they have no claims. But you never know, they could just be complete jerks. Is that a risk I want to take? I suppose. I want to, I'm curious to find out when and why they do or don't transfer control. Um, of course, I do this right as we have 80% stuff. 80% unrest in that province. Or, sorry, 80% revolt chance on the, uh, the thing. Oh, that's not something I want to do. Kill three ships. We didn't lose any ships. That's important. Fully maintained fort, fully maintained fort, fully maintained, fully maintained. Nothing in Danzig. So if we could get military access through Pomerania, you are hostile. Well, we could just just land in Sweden then. Sorry, did I just say land in Sweden? I can't speak English. I'm like, I'm like dumb. Yeah, they have a significant navy, a little bit stronger than I expected. So that might not happen. I could just march down there and take Danzig, though. I, mean, I declared it over Danzig, so that'd be ideal. Um, if they march in here, they've got two fortresses or two forts that they've got to go through. We are coring this, but I think it's fine. Novgorod, will you give me military access? No. Skov? Close. Probably somebody we should improve relations with and get some access from. Alright, go ahead, Lithuania, and just go win the war for me, please. Uh, 
not having our navy protecting trade is affecting things. Okay, well, I'm going to take a break here. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, where we will hopefully get a hold of Danzig and Mamel. That would be an amazing increase in the amount of trade power we have in the Baltic Sea, which is where a pretty sizable chunk of income comes from. Three ducats a month out of 16. A nice little chunk there. All right, I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.